Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I am Stephanie Sebbing. We are gonna be making a really awesome bag tutorial today. We have the Adeline bag from So Many Creations. This is a fabulous bag. It's a really good size and it's gonna stow a lot of stuff. We've got some kits that I'm gonna show you in just a little bit that are sewing and knitting themed. I'm gonna use this as my knitting bag and carry my socks and my patterns around in it because I knit in public almost every single day when I'm toting my kids around from activity to activity. Let me show you some of the cool features and the things that we are going to learn as we go through this. First, we're gonna cover how to fuse interfacing and fleece to the back of our fabric for our bag so that we can turn quilting cotton into a really durable, bag fabric that's gonna last for a long time. We're gonna learn how to use templates to cut the shapes out of the bag so we can have a nice shaped bag instead of just a square box. We're gonna learn how to create our handle and install hardware on it so that way we can have a sliding adjustable handle. We're gonna learn how to sew our front flap, install a twist lock for our hardware. We're gonna learn how to insert a zipper and sew the outside zipper pocket. And then we're gonna learn how to actually assemble the body of the bag with a gusset included. We're gonna create a divided pocket so we can keep our goodies organized on the inside. We're gonna cover sewing the entire bag together so that you don't have any bits of thread hanging out afterwards or interfacing. I'm gonna show you how to sew the lining clothes on a machine and we're going to have a lot of fun doing it. In this tutorial that you're gonna be able to see on YouTube, you're just gonna see how I install this twist lock. The entire tutorial is available on our website, academy.quiltedictsanonymous.com. It's a new website that we came out with that has more than 100 tutorials for you guys to watch. They have exclusive content that is not available here on YouTube. And in this case, it's a full tutorial that walks you through everything step-by-step step with a segment for every single step that we covered here. So that way you can easily know where you're at and zip around to where you need the most help or follow along step-by-step step if that's what you need. If you sign up for the course, you also are going to get a link to be able to save 10% on the pattern. So make sure you sign up for the course first. And then once you click on the supply list, there's gonna be an exclusive link that will take you to our website where you can get the pattern for less. We also have some kits available for you if you're watching this in real time. Um, it really is a fun one. First, I'm gonna show you this one. I'm gonna use this as my knitting bag. The fabric is from Lewis and Irene. It is a newer fabric company and the fabric is all digitally printed. It is gorgeous, it's lovely, and I really enjoyed sewing with it for this project. The line that we have is sewing and knitting theme. I know there's a lot of crossover for you guys out there. I definitely cross over. I am bringing knitting with me almost everywhere I go because I am carting my kids around all the time and I'd like to have something to do to keep my hands busy while I'm there. So this is my year of socks. So I'm gonna keep my current knitting project inside of it. Let me give you a preview of what all is in this bag. This outside zipper pocket is really awesome. It's huge. It comes up the entire length of the front of the bag and it actually is not that hard to put together. This is my second easiest zipper install um, for the different types of zippers that I know how to install. And it's a lot of types of zippers. So this one is, is not bad. And we're gonna give you some tips and tricks on how to get it perfectly centered using some steam -a seam Then once we open up our twist lock and we come inside, there's a nice little divided pocket in here that's lovely for keeping you know, your car keys at easy glance. And then we have a big enough opening to be able to fit like a little book in. And then we have a large section on the inside of this bag that we can keep everything nice and tidy with. And since we have an adjustable handle, you can turn it into a crossbody or an over the shoulder bag, whichever you prefer or works best for you in the moment. Let's take a peek at some of the other fabrics that we have. This one is all knitting themed. There are some cute little spools of thread on the inside and we have a darker handle that has little pins all over it. If a lighter bag isn't really your style and you're worried that you're gonna get it all dirty, we have the same fabric um, design where it's all knitting themed, except it is a more of a rust brown background. And then we have this pale dusty pink, 
where you see some buttons and bows on top. So this one is really cute as well. We still have all the gold hardware. This is a gold zipper with, it's meant to look like metal, but it's actually plastic. So it's really easy to sew with. Next up, we have a really nice sewing theme design. So if you're someone who likes to take handwork with you, this one might be best for you. This one has some really gorgeous embroidery scissors on it, a spool of thread with a needle through it, and then these cute little florals that tie everything together as the threads loop around. This one also kind of has a rusty brown background, which is in in fashion right now, matches perfectly with my sweater. And this one has a brown handle with the pins for the design on that as well. And we're gonna wrap up the tour of Adeline's with another sewing themed one. This one combines the sewing and the knitting theme. So if you're both like me, this is maybe the one that you want. We've got some um, trim that's all on a card. We have a seam ripper. We have the cute shears or embroidery scissors. We have more yarn. We have needles. We have thread and buttons and thimbles and all the goodies on here, pin cushions. So this is a really fun one. This one uses the same handle lining as the first one. It's really gorgeous, really fun. Great to bring your handwork around in if you're someone like me who likes to travel with something to do because you just cannot possibly sit still. Your hands need to be doing something. All right, so in this video, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a look at how I installed this zipper and was able to get it perfectly centered. It is, like I said, the second easiest zipper install I know how to do. It is not that bad. You kind of measure it out and then you're able to flip the pocket to the inside and it's pretty easy peasy. A little, a little intimidating the first time you do it, but once you've done it, it's like, ah, oh, I got this. That's no big deal. And if you wanna, if you're intrigued and you wanna make this bag and you think you want a little help and you want the step-by-step -step guidance, I provide it for the entire bag. You just have to grab our course over at academy.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. That is a different website than our shopping website. So if you purchased with us before and you have a login over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com, you need to create a new one when you are getting your login for academy.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. You're gonna be able to keep track of all the courses. There's a bunch of free ones as well as paid ones that you can take. And it really is a lot of fun. We've got some really long in-depth courses that really make you a better quilter. Many of them are free as well as just one and done ones where you're really interested in learning how to do a pattern or a technique, or in this case, how to make this bag. Everything is segmented out so that way you can learn how to do the zipper and how to install the hardware and how to do the handle all in separate videos. That way you don't feel like, oh my gosh, I'm sitting through this really, really long video and I don't know where to stop because I don't know where to come back to. You're gonna be able to come right back, pick up right where you left off and you'll be good to go. All right, go check that out over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com to get all your supplies and academy.quiltaddictsanonymous.com to learn more about how to make this in depth where it's like me sitting in your living room with you working on it. So to install our foot block, first we have to find the center at the bottom of our bag. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make a mark here. I'm using my friction gel pen to do this because it will go away with heat later. Next, we're gonna take our turn lock here. You could use a turn lock or a flip flop. They're pretty interchangeable. It comes with a couple of different pieces. For this outside part, we need the female side of the twist lock, which is the part with the hole in it, and the male side, which is the part that turns, and then this bracket we're gonna save for later. That's gonna go on the outside of our bag and not the flap. So when you see your flip lock or your twist lock, the brand that we have have four false screws on the front. Those are just decorative. They're not actually used to install your bag. What we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it over and you can see there are two Phillips head screws in the back. So these are the ones that we want to unscrew and make sure you keep them in a nice place. I have this tiny little screwdriver set that I found at my local hardware store that I use whenever I have anything to do with my sewing machines. It has both flat head and Phillips head on it. And so I can grab it at the size I need and I can get to go work on that.
I'm gonna actually set my screws inside my little container. That way they don't roll away and get lost forever and always. All right, now you can take your piece apart. This side here that has all of the texture on it, that's going to be in the back. This side here is what's going to be in the front. Now we want to position this so that way it, the flip lock is going to be just above where our stitching line is. And you can have a little bit of discretion with that, but basically I'm positioning that bottom decorative screw so that it is just over that line that I marked to show where the center is. Once I think that looks good, I'm gonna go ahead and hold that in place and I'm gonna trace around the edges trying really hard to keep that pen in contact with the edges of it, the twist lock where the opening is gonna be. That way I've got a really good outline of the part that I need to remove. Now I'm gonna take my micro tip um, scissors. I really love these. I'm gonna kind of fold this in half just so I can get my first cut in to get through there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm not actually gonna remove that entire section, I'm just going to cut horizontally from side to side. And I actually didn't make it all the way through, so I, we might have to go through this a little bit, but I really like these micro tips for this process because you really can get in there really well. Now, sometimes you might have to expand this hole a little bit, but I find it is always easier to make it a little bigger than it is to try and make it smaller later on. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to insert our piece through, and this actually is not quite large enough because I need to be able to get these screw holes in there as well. So we're gonna need to get a little bit wider. So I'm going to now also mark, I'm putting everything back center the way I had it, and I'm also gonna mark the outside of where those screw holes hit. So if I look at it like this, I've got my screw holes, and now this is the outside of where they're going to be, is right here. So I need to cut straight across so that this entire section can fit in between there. And remember, I'm gonna cut up to, but not beyond that, because I might need to expand it a little bit, but it's a lot easier to expand it then have it be too big. You might have to start over. All right, so this is our last chance to make sure that our fleece side is facing up because now we're gonna try and insert this and if it fits, we're gonna leave it in there. So I've got the right side facing up and the right side of my lock going in from there. I'm gonna flip it over and see if I can fit that through or if I need to open that a little wider. Our goal here to get it to fit all the way around. And it's not quite there, I need to open it up a little bit more. So I'm just gonna do the teeniest little bit of expansion on both sides so that way it's nice and even and centered. Now checking to make sure that I'm putting the right side of the lock on the right side of the bag. We're gonna flip it over and see if we can get it to wrap around. I find it's easiest if you actually put it down on a table like this and try and to manipulate it around. Your goal is to get all of these fuzzy bits to be hidden within the twist lock and not kind of be sitting around it at this center. All right, that is looking pretty good. If you have fray check, now is the time to use it. You'll wanna use it around these edges. But at this point, I can see my two screw holes. I've got this mostly pulled out of the way. So we're gonna be okay there. So I'm gonna put that on top and I'm gonna grab my extra screws and put them in place. And I'm giving this some elbow grease with my left hand here to kind of really hold everything in place and hold that fabric out of the way. So that way I've got a really nice finish here. Now 
Now for a little extra stability, you also can add some Guterman glue within there. That is also a possibility. But right now what I'm doing is I'm checking from the front and I'm kind of making sure I can see a few little threads that are poking through. We're gonna go ahead and give those a clip, get them out of there. All right. Looking pretty good. We've got it centered. We have everything in place. Maybe give one final little twist here. Make sure we have it on there good. And that part is done. So I'm gonna take the right side of my flap and place it against the right side of my bag back. I'm centering that and I'm going to clip it on the corners and at the center. And then we're gonna stitch within the seam allowance to secure that to it. Now we're going to add the male side of your twist or flip lock. I've already marked out where the center is and a specific number of inches down. You'll find that in step seven of your pattern instructions. And again, the pattern is Adeline by So Many Creations and you can get that on our website over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. So now what you can do is you can see here that I'm centering this throughout here. And we're gonna have two prongs that are gonna fit in here. So you wanna kind of see what it is. And in this case, it's gonna fit in the outer two prongs. That's where it kind of lines up the best. So now that I have everything centered over my cross mark, I'm gonna put some lines really kind of thickly and darkly in those outside two prongs so that I know where I'm supposed to be cutting again with those micro tip scissors. You can also use an X-Acto knife for this, but I don't have one of those and I just wanna use the tools that I have on hand. So just like before, what I like to do is kind of fold it back and I'm folding it back on that line and give a clip right along there. And sometimes it doesn't make it all the way through so just go ahead and take your scissors and make sure it's made it through. And then I'm just gonna test to make sure that my prongs go through fine, which they are. Everything's coming through to the back. Everything is still centered. Everything is looking good. Now, before I go any further, I'm gonna take my iron to this so that I can remove my mark because it's gonna be easier to do at this step than it will be later. All right, so now I'm gonna take and put my male side of my twist lock through the front. Again, if you have um, fray check, this is a really good time to put it on before you get any further. And then I'm going to go ahead and set my bracket on the outside. And then what you wanna do is find a little bit of extra fusible, and I'm just gonna cut a little bit out of it to fit in between. And this will just give you a little bit extra durability as you use your bag. I'm just gonna cut it in half here. I just want it big enough so that I can stick it behind the twist lock, give it a little bit extra padding as I use it. All right, that's looking good. So now we're going to push our prongs over so it sometimes be the hardest part because it doesn't want to lay flat. I want to do the other side as well. Sometimes people at this point will also take an extra bit of fusible and put it on the back of this to also protect your lining fabric. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that now so you can see that process as well. We just need a little bit, no one's gonna see this, it's just on the back. So we just need enough to cover and kind of give it a little bit of padding. So I'm gonna take that to the iron now and fuse it down. Now, just like before, I'm gonna flip everything over and I'm gonna go at it from the front side. I go over a little bit more on this side and I think we are good to go now. 